open at uh, my watch is my actually six thirty eight to open the select board meeting for uh, September twenty fourth. First order of business is the approval of minutes. We have uh, from last week, for September 10th and September 17th. Does everyone have an opportunity to review them? To make adjustments where they may be needed? I, I can't speak to the 10th minutes. You weren't a member, so we, you will abstain from that one. <laughs> I did as well as the 17th. I just had one question for clarification yes. with Selmy. And what was my question again? <laughs> oh, it was who, who was it was the New Hampshire Department of Nursing. Okay. Was that correction made? Okay. Or, or was it was just a clarification for you? It was just a clarification okay. of okay. The, who we were referring yeah, so to. Without so objection, then, by consensus, we will adopt the September 10th and 17th meeting. Minutes for the note that Mr. England has abstaining from the tent because he wasn't a member at that time. Green input. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Melanie, and she would like to be appointed to the Conservation Commission. She attended our last meeting oh, and met everybody in the, in the group. And um, we had about eight minutes on about you know, five weeks ago. Oh, well, she gave me a call and said that she wanted to She said she wasn't bored. Okay. And I said, what would you like me to tell you? And she said, you can tell them whatever you want. She said, but I'm old. So, <laughs> so that's what she said. Okay. And we've since had a couple of conversations where she's called and said, you know, what, what, what about this, what about that? So we're, you know, we're still in communication. Everything's great. Okay. And she just didn't want to do it. What would you like to relay back to the board that we thank her for her service? Absolutely. We will send her. She doesn't do email, so yes. I don't believe. So I'll try to call her. Okay. That will let you into the select board's office and the 
tax collectors on it. Is that a town hall key then? Front door? Um, yeah, yeah, no, no. He has a front door. Oh, we actually have the office itself. So. Perfect. Okay. Just in case the car yeah. does not work. Okay. Purchase order number 1466, made out to the city of Dover. Uh, early this month, we sent the three vehicles over to uh, Dover for the yearly inspections, and one of them actually needed to have rear brakes. That was cruiser number 74. <coughs> so, again, purchase order 1466, city of Dover, for $400. So that would mind, I guess. Uh, I'll have you move it in a second, and we'll talk about it. So, what you're going to say is? I move purchase order number and hope my glass will see yep. whatever the number is, 466 okay. to the city of Dover in the amount of $400. Okay, I move that we pay purchase order 1466 to the city of Dover for $400. Or just say for vehicle repairs. For vehicle repairs. Easier that one. Second. Okay, we have that. So, it needs to be done. That, that's not what I, my, my, my question is. How are we coming along in our vehicle maintenance line? It doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. Perfect. All right. Any other discussion or questions from either member? Mm -hmm. All right. So, if none, then uh, all those in favor of purchase order 1466 say aye. 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 aye opposed? All right. <coughs> So we're actually taking the weight off of the, uh, the hips and putting it on the shoulders. Um, the vest that we currently uh, purchase, uh, the bullet resistant vest, are about $700. The carrier is an additional $70. The vest that we're looking at uh, from this company here are $343.73 per person. They actually come with the hard ceramic plate okay. as opposed to the, uh, the, uh, the pliable These, unless they drop and break them, do not have an expiration date where we're replacing the Kevlar ones every five years. Mm -hmm. So in the long run, I anticipate, one, we're going to have less injuries as a result of all the weight on someone's waist. Uh, and secondly, we're going to save some money because in the long run, the vests are slightly cheaper. And here's just a, a quick look at it. So a ceramic plate stops the a, a, a bullet better than Kevlar? Uh, they're just as, uh, they go by classification 1, 1, 8, 2, 2, 8, 3, uh -huh. 3, and uh, we'll I trust you know, which is what we're currently You wouldn't put your office at risk. I'm just, that just sounds nuts yeah. to me that that's true. But, so, yeah. how heavy is the ceramic plate compared to the other one? It's, it's, it's not much heavier. Really? Yep. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I guess I don't know. I had a question, but you've already answered it. So, hmm. So we'll look at the purchase one and evaluate it. We'll let Officer okay. LaJoy uh, wear it for a little bit. Uh, evaluate it to the, what the folks think and we'll move from there. So I purchased number 1469 to the Whitmer Public Safety Group for $343.72 for one external body carrier with the assorted pouches. And that will come out of our uniform line item. Okay. You move that and I have a question. Uh, I move for two order one four six nine for the more public safety group for three forty three seventy three for uniforms. Second that. Okay. Thank you. And I should have asked that. So I typically mildly don't get to ask questions until I can move okay. down the floor, but I wrote that rule, so shame on me. <laughs> um, if they do happen to drop and it shatters somehow or cracks, can we replace the, those plates? Yes. Or, okay, you don't have to replace the whole No, they don't replace the whole Okay. They, they just slide into the carrier, yeah. like our current vest. They just right. slide into the external <clears throat> And maybe you said it, and I just missed it. Uh, how much are the replacements? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Well, but it's significantly cheaper, cheaper than yeah. buying Kevlar vests. Yes. I do have a question. So sure. it, it's going to be worn like while they're in the vehicle. Is it? It's worn twenty four seven when they're on duty. Yes. Is and it? 
flexible enough to, I mean, you're getting one to try it out, obviously, to see if it's comfortable. From what I've seen, the hospital, the hospital, uh, work, the, the security folks over, the, over there wear them, South Park PD wears them, oh, okay. PD wears them. So you have and they, they all rave about them. Um, uh, what they really like is they're getting a lot of the weight off of their waist, and it's, mm -hmm. it's on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. but, 20 years uh, of wearing all that weight on your shoulder after a while, you might not like that either, right? <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Right. Are there any other questions, comments, or concerns? Okay. Thank you. We'll move the question then. All those in favor of purchase order 1469 say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. It's also the Joy know that he's a test case. Ah, uh, yes, he's uh, actually one of the proposals to me. So. Okay, the repeater project. Yes. Uh, the uh, two ways required to have the, the project completed by this Friday, and we are required to have all outstanding uh, invoices paid by this Friday. So I've been frantically scrambling with uh, Mr. Electric and Two Way all day today and all day Friday for them to get their final invoices to us. Um, so the first one is for Mr. Electric. It's uh, purchase number order 1468. It's for $1,212.62. And that will come out of the FEMA reimbursement line item. And that is for the, uh, to hook up the electrical from the base up there up to the repeaters being installed there two way. Okay. I got a question. All right. I move. Uh, we move purchase order number. Move purchase order number 1468. To Mr. Electric for the uh, electrical hookup for the radio repeater. And you're on to $1,212.62. I'm going to need your glasses for that. Isn't that $1,000? Okay, I thought you said, okay, you did say $1,000. Okay, I think just something else. Sorry. Second. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. You're going to have, you know, have everything. Tonight we're going to do. We're going to approve these tonight. I'm going to ask. Look to Caroline. We'll have the, everything. I can come in midweek and sign checks if I need to. That's all if I we need. We approve them. I'm, That's I'm all I need. Okay, but we'll be able to. Otherwise, yes. Make this happen by Friday, so we can get the grant money and then buy. Okay, perfect. Any other questions? All right. So, all those in, uh, in favor of purchase order fourteen sixty eight say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. And this was covered by. Uh, is part it's part of its femur, is that what you're saying? But part Correct. of it's also the um, it, it goes back to twenty seventeen to the original warrant order number twelve. Right, yeah. And the original two ways I think the original purchase order two way separately. Okay. Save the big one for Denise. Oh, <laughs> two way communications. Yeah. Uh, purchase order number one four six seven, the second half of the bill for the radio repeater ten thousand four hundred dollars. Um, this can be uh, Connected with the original purchase order, which was 1314, issued back in November 6th of 2017, in the amount of 23550 50, 50, $23,545. Excuse me, thank you. All right, I'll move purchase order 1467, two way communications, radio repeater. This is coming from the FEMA account as well. Correct. For ten thousand four hundred dollars. A second. Okay. okay. Any other questions, concerns? Well, I I just have a yep. question. Of course. How, I'm directing it to Caroline, if I may. How does that, with two different years, how does that work? Did the money get? Um, it was rolled over because it was when we can identify ahead of time that things are not spent okay. but approved, particularly in Warren yeah. articles. The auditor can deal with that. Okay. In a limited. We just try not to do that. Okay, thank you. Extenuating circumstances here, so yes, we try not to make a habit of it, but mm -hmm. every once in a while it has to happen. So, any other questions, comments, or concerns? Yes. All right. With that, then, all those in favor of purchase order fourteen sixty seven say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Do you need this? Um, no. Some. I submitted the 2019 budget yes. to you folks for review, yes. and I imagine uh, at some point, we're in the future, we'll sit and discuss it. Yes. I mean, obviously, I wasn't going to go tonight, but no. um, so, uh, 
just as a reminder, again, uh, whatever pay raises come will be um, based upon the merit as opposed to just across the board and, uh, pay raises for everybody. Okay. So, so for um, for next week, we uh, will have a we'll carve out time okay. on the agenda yeah. to go through the budget. We have a, a workshop uh, Saturday, but there's a lot more to worry about than. I'm not trying to say just the police department sure. or just highway or just fire. There's yeah. everything else we got to worry about. So we had a lot oh, to work yeah. on just that day. So sure. uh, we're not uh, we're not quite behind the eight ball yet. Um, so, but next next month, next Monday, we will be prepared to go through the budget with you and hopefully George and um, fire. So okay, that's all that I have for you folks. Anything for me? No, no thank you. Saturday you went well. Awesome. It was great. Yes, yeah. I think it did. I was yeah. really very happy with it. I should have said that when all those people in the room, but yes, it was yeah. a, the best one yet. Yeah. I it really so. was. Yeah. People wise, anyway. Yeah. 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 And, and it was shorter a lot of time, but. And that's why they were there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's hard, I think, to spread it out throughout the whole. Mm -hmm. yeah. so the plan is next year, same thing. Next fire work yep. around. Well, I heard it the week. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you want the key to the planning room? Return. Are you still on the planning board? As I board? am as the ex officio. Keep it. Okay. Keep it for now. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go rifling through the desk in the other room to find the key. Right. <laughs> yeah, really. When someone needs it. When someone well needs it. Well labeled. Yes, yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I should have said it's not anything you do. It's usually like, in the middle of a meeting we need more chairs and I'm going to try to go find a key. So. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. George, you're up. Now, if anyone didn't go down and touch a truck, uh, George, any of George's vehicles Saturday, you don't know what I know. <laughs> so I'll let George tell it. I know something. I'm hoping it isn't bad. And I didn't do it because I didn't touch it. But November we got there, so go ahead, George. With that setup. Yeah. Salt for salt for this coming winter, mm -hmm. and it's gone, slightly gone up, seven fifty by fifty four for one thousand tons of salt. Uh, Did you say Morton? Morton, yeah. Is just it like, like table salt? Just yeah, like the Morton company. salt girl. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know it. that. It's the best. Look at that. It's right there. There she is with her slicker it and her uh, <laughs> rubber boots and umbrella. Mm -hmm. It always makes me chuckle every time I see it. Yeah. I wouldn't advise eating this salt, but you know, salt. So, so per ton, just so everyone knows. So right now, Morton, if we go with Morton, it's they're suggesting it's going to be fifty-five point five four per ton. Um, in the fall of twenty fourteen, it was fifty-two sixty-five. Then it went up to fifty-four thirty-eight. It's all right. Okay. okay. Um, and then, but in 2016, it was up to 58.27, and it went down to 53.80 last year, yeah, and now it's up again. So th this is not a, every every year it bounces up and down, fluctuates at least $2 every year. Some, in one case, it's five, so. That's over five. July to July. So, yeah, so we will, um, I'm going to, do you want to hold on to this, or do you want Caroline to hold on to it? When do we have to let them know by? Well, if we want to go with them or not. Is we it also, I suggest it's yeah. better. Okay. What's the other, the, is it New Hampshire, Granite, Granite and Mineral, Mineral, whatever, Mineral. Granite State Mineral? Do we have a corporate? Yeah. They're usually way higher, so. But they have been in the last several years, so. The state one is just, it's just under that. It's not, it's like. So they, the, they've been, apparently they've been treating people. Well. The product is better. Well, this is what we've been told in the past, is that the product itself is better. That the stuff from Granite uh, State Mineral was, nice. was very wet, and so it would just freeze up and chunk up, and it wasn't as useful in our machinery as the, that quote-unquote superior product from Morton. Have you, have you seen that to be true? I mean, you don't have experience with the other stuff, I guess, but... We, I've been... We use Morton, but okay. You did? Okay. So why would we want to get something that isn't... I don't think we do. Oh. I don't think we do, but I just even George is the expert, not me. So I want to. The other guy putting it out there, not me. So I, if it's if it's working the right way, I don't want us to gum up our machinery with the other stuff. It's not a problem with them. We call them, we get it. Okay. You know, it's at least that's the experience I had with them last year. Okay. And 
So your recommendation is to stay with more? I would do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the minimum order is a 32 ton. That doesn't mean we actually have to use 32 tons. We just have to reserve, right? No, the minimum order is you have to have 32 tons. Our order last year, so, so both of you, on, you, you were here through one of these cycles, but Right. Okay, so you haven't know the joys of order and so Okay, you have to tell them what you anticipate you're going to use. You don't necessarily have to buy. What was it last year? 464 tons. Um, that's a lot of salt. But if you don't reserve that, you're, what you think you may use, what happened a few years ago to a lot of towns, I don't know if we were, I remember if we were one of them or if we were close to being one of them. They run out of salt down mm -hmm. there at the state pier. <laughs> um, but wherever else they're bringing it in, they probably there's the state pier in Portland, wherever they're bringing it in. And if they don't have it there, they don't have it here. But if you reserve it, you're guaranteed out of that allotment to get what you need versus another town that may not have only said they need 400, oops, they need 410. So that extra 10 tons. Reserve means pay for it? No, we don't have to actually pay for it. You pay for what you actually use. But you have to give them your... your, your their yes. estimate. Yes. I mean, it's a good faith estimate. We don't typically go that high, but they understand that too, that there could be a more mild winter or it could be worse and we might actually need more salt. Not for bit, but... Okay. Of course. Yeah. So, they're basing their delivery for what the towns and cities are saying that they're going to use. If we have a mild winter and it isn't used, what happens to that? They don't have to buy it. But what happens to the product? It's I mean, it's on the pier. It's, it's it's on the pier. I mean, yeah. So Lost it would be there for next year. Yeah. I mean, they have a means of not, for it not to get melted or whatever. Yeah, they keep it cut. A lot of them keep it. They keep it covered more so than you know. I mean, you don't. You, it's all covered. Hmm. But apparently, Grand Estates has some issues with the, top, the plastic's blown off and the mm -hmm. water gets in it and it gets hardened and you know you get chunks and. Don't go with no, I, I was in Portsmouth the Saturday. I down, actually drove down by the state here. They've got giant white tarps over right now, but that's you know, all salt under there. So is this price from January to December? What is it? <coughs> well, it's from July 1 of this year to June 30th of, of next, next year. year. Okay. Yeah. So. And if you don't use what you say you're estimating your uses, um, and it's left over, can you get that for the same price, your usage, or is it gone, it, the slate is cleaned in June? I didn't fill the shed this summer because we had some issue, issues that we're fixing right now, and I want to order it as soon as possible, so that's why yeah. I want to get that yeah. signed. Uh, I don't know how many loads it's going to take, but we got, you know, we got room to get, we should be able to go right up the first year without having to buy it after we get the first ship, hopefully, unless we get a and what is, um, 3D start doing it. I don't know. Do we go over our salt line? I don't think so. This, this year we didn't, right? We haven't yet. So there is money if you wanted to order some now to, in this year's budget to fill up the shed. But That's you have a place to put it to do that. But I don't know if we get that cherry chart to the other one. Right. Right. Oh, yeah, there's money left this year. You're going to get this because the right. contract goes from July money. of this year. We're too late to buy under the old price. All right, so the question is how much do we want? To reserve, and it says here, um, I you, did, you must have talked to them. It says the total tons one thousand, but we only reserved. Uh, I, I don't. I didn't have nothing to do with that one. Okay, so hold on just a second, George. Caroline, I'm sorry, you're here for something else, but I'm going to pick your brain anyways because you're here. Um, Four hundred sixty-four tons. Is that what we reserved? That's what we actually used. That's what we actually That's used. That's what we actually we used in 2017. We always ask for okay. a thousand. For the past several okay. years, we've asked for a thousand. Right. Okay, so that that is a big scary number, but the scarier number is a thousand tons, and that's what we're reserving, and we only used about half of that, a little less than half of it this past year. But and let's hope that's all we have to do, or less this year. But so it would be for a thousand tons. Okay. Or do you wish to keep? You wish to keep it at a thousand? You don't want to change it? You think that's good? I would have to agree. That would be safe to sorry. Yeah. All right, so we would need a motion then to enter into a contract with Miss uh, with Morton, not Miss with Morton Salt. Good Lord, I can't speak. And we'll look for, take a look at it. So 
sure your motion would be for the rate, right? Yep. And for and up, the quantity up, up, up to, to a thousand tons. Reasonable. People just need the time to light the roads clear. Yeah, that's what it is. Did you? Just no, you're making it all second. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I move that we uh, enter into a contract with Morton Salt uh, to reserve a thousand tons of salt at fifty-five fifty-four a ton. A second. A second. Any other discussion? Um, so we're going to stick strictly with the with just salt application and not salt and sand. The only time we'll use sand is if it gets cold, that salt's not well. Oh, working. Okay. All right. And um, you and um, Ed have both already been through the, the green the green way to plow. <laughs> All right. Pros, so, whatever, pros, whatever it was called. So there, there are different techniques that they're both going to be able to employ. It's actually able to save us some salt, too. So. Uh, all right. All those in favor of uh, entering in with Morton Salt, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Let's see here. So do you come after the fact with your sand purchase? I mean, it's not now. We didn't purchase any last year, and we have plenty in the shed. Oh, okay. Okay, delivery address. And the sand we use, we can mix. We actually got sand uh, from the cemetery if you wanted to remove some. You want to, I don't want to be a contact person for the salt people. Do you, do you want George or do you want Caroline? Okay, so we'll leave that blank and you can fill that in. I don't want Morton Salt calling me asking when the best time to deliver it is or whatever because no, where the bill's going because yeah, you two, you don't get that. My house is Unless I'm doing it. Oh, oh yeah, you do. All right, so. No, we got the green one. Right, Let's sure. check. No, it's going to no, go. This one right now. It's going to go in right. here. We're going to leave it on this set items that need follow up. So now put it in here. Mm -hmm. All right, that's for the contract. Too many different we'll go through it again at the end. Put it in the meeting last. Okay. okay. What else we got for us, George? Okay, I have a PO for number 1500 for the city of Dover. Mm -hmm. OG payment. Okay. For $12,500. Perfect. We haven't hit the bill yet. That's what they told us our portion will be. So. Motion to um, accept purchase order 1500 for paving on Oak Street with $12,500 to the city of Dover. I'll set that up. Okay, so everyone is on the same page. This was done before you arrived, Miles. Uh, city of Dover approached us and said, you know, they, they want to deal with Oak Street this year. Um, caught us by surprise because we've actually been asking them when they want to do Oak Street. They said, oh, we're not doing it for several years. Apparently several years was a year um, in Dover. Um, George had some money that was going to be spent, could possibly spent on other road projects. This came up, it was $12,500, which was a lot less than what we thought it was actually going to be to put the, the shim coat over there. So oh, it's just a Okay. And done a full reclamation of the road. A full reclamation of the road for twelve thousand dollars. Every road would be done every year. Um, but where's it coming from? It's coming from line. It's out of the, the paving line that we've got the cap around. Yes. Yes. Just want to make sure it's on there. Well, I'll tell know. you what's okay. going. I'm all set. I know. No? Okay. I just want to make sure that's Caroline. That was the one. Caroline knows what. Yep. So. Any other questions? Is it done? Concerned? It's done. It is. It is. So they didn't yet. go as far as the previous road in some areas, and that's what they wanted. I mean, this tar beyond, old tar beyond where they stopped, like more so by the side of where the pool is. There's some areas that oh, didn't go all the way in on the inside of the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah we are. <laughs> our, yeah, side, our half of the road is completely paved. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 that's, it didn't come up through. Yeah. Oh, no, it's great. Yeah. No. Yeah. And they did. They didn't do a certain portion up to the bridge, uh, right there, because it, um, um, when they have to do the bridge work, which will have to happen in the next several years, which in Dover again, who knows when that really is, um, it would have all torn up because of drainage and everything. So they didn't want to spend the money, yeah. and I agreed with them. And George agreed with them when we met with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it, it, this is only just so people are clear. It's just a, a coat. It's not a full reclamation. So, any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of purchase order 1500, say aye. 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 Opposed? 
That's a help alleviate uh, George and crew having to dodge traffic and filling potholes, hopefully, in the middle paving of the uh, Or paving in January, hopefully. Purchase order number 1488 for $495 for Jack's towing out of York. This was for when the truck broke down in the storm in March. He just didn't get his bills up. Oh, okay. Uh, it's actually for two towings. One to tow the truck back here, see if we can find out what was wrong with it. And obviously, it was they, we couldn't pick it up. Oh, because it. He had his computer, we couldn't pick it up, so we had to tow it to Bill Dooley's. And Bill Dooley's. Uh, So I will purchase the order of $1488 for $495 for uh, Jack's towing in New York for uh, two, two tow trips. Second. Which, I, I can't remember the word. What is that was probably not here, right? The what? The I-50? Yeah. Okay. There was a uh, corroded starter relay in it, and the computer said it was showing nothing wrong with it. So, what line are we going That's for? That's a bit of a vehicle. Vehicle maintenance. And is this vehicle of a, a certain classification where it needs a specialized tow truck? Or I'm just wondering why we had to go to York to get a tow driver and not somewhere closer. He had one from Dover. It's, it's, a, it's actually a bigger, it's bigger truck. Than, uh, so, that we, did need a, we needed a bigger tow truck. Okay. That's, uh, people are going to say, well, why did you get someone from Dover? Why would it have been cheaper? You needed a larger. Right. It was, okay. it's, Truck, yeah, truck is fully loaded with salt and the plow on. Okay, so I'm, I was just want to when someone, someone in Brown Bass is in town, so now I know. Well, we all know. All right, are there any um, questions, concerns, complaints, anything else for this purchase order? Yeah, all right. He was actually there. Which... Okay, uh, all those in favor of purchase order 1488 say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Significantly since we spoke on Saturday, George. No, I thought it was about 2,000. It was 2,000 before the. He said it would be just under 2,000 for the rear springs if it was only going to be rear springs. Oh, hey, I, mean, I see. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, that was. Dover would have charged us 2,000 more than what Donovan is called. That's right. the 2,000 I told you. Okay. All right. Now I remember now. Okay. He suggested we send it to Donovan Springs because they make the springs and they can install them a lot faster than. Than Dover. Yeah. Sam, most garages don't even deal with it. They just send them up there. It's easier. And, and yeah, Dover told you that they'd have to charge a lot more. Oh, yeah, it'd be about $2,000 more if they get it. Okay, so we want to go the cheaper route for sure. Um, how are we doing on the vehicle maintenance line? Well, we were at. It can do it. We had, we had um, just about 11000 before all these issues. Okay. Bobcat's going. They finally got the pot for that, and we've already approved the 3000 for yeah. that. So that's going in. 
we're going to bring that up tomorrow or Wednesday. Okay. You mentioned that this is a, a six-year-old truck and it has done hell of well for being a six-year-old. Most towns are changing springs in two years. Okay. Because you, in the wintertime, with your plow gear, you're running and you're hauling 41,000 without the plow gear on you. Right? It's a lot of weight for them small trucks, that, those trucks. Hmm. And the stalls are on them all the time and being beat up in the plows. So, you know, they take a beat. This oh, is the, the first time? The this is the first time these springs have been changed. Okay. Fortunately. And this is something that you notice when you do an inspections, or clearly you might notice something if they break. Well, we've been hauling gravel with yeah. it quite a bit too, so you, yeah. you know, we, we watch, we look underneath the truss as much as we can, but mm -hmm. you know, paint rust sometimes hides things, and then when you start seeing this will separate, the screws will separate from the weight from bouncing around, and you start, that's when you notice when things are happening. But it, it didn't pass inspection, so there's right. just no... Truck's out of service until we get it. Okay. Well, she's living in her truck. Kind of, yeah. It's scheduled for the uh, next Monday, so we'll, we'll get it down there on Monday. Any other questions? All right. All those in favor of purchase order number 1501, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Other than uh, this, and I know you don't have a crystal ball, but uh, the rest of the fleet is uh, ready to go for winter after uh, after this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, they've all been the oil change been done. They're all inspected. All inspected. That's just waiting for the sticker. Okay. It will be a built and build because they did some work on that truck prior to it. I don't know what that goes for. Okay, less than three thousand, I hope. I would hope so. Okay. But, uh, it's a great can and stuff that has to be replaced. With Anything else? <laughs> no. Not, no, no more for those tonight. Okay. I just want to give you a heads up. We are in the process of finishing the work in the salt shed, so we, that's why I wanted to make sure yep. we do that. And uh, we moved the residential salt bin away from the salt shed to the other side of the yard. Oh, okay. Because, I don't know how many times last year I am with that, there's somebody, because they decide, they come in here for salt, it's more important than us loading trucks. Ah. So, so where is the residential salt bin now? It's going to be to the right side of the building. Oh, okay. And uh, Fine. we have some sheet metal that they we recovered from when they do it on the uh, full highway shed. So we're going to use that to put a roof structure. Oh, good. Keep okay. the water out. Keep the water out. Perfect. So great. Uh, we have a few. So that should be good. And okay. The bailer is should be just about ready. It's not in. Okay. Installed yet, and then we'll have to wait for this all to do the wiring, but that's okay. Everything's been ground. We have the money earmarked for all that. Um, we have Oak Street MOU still on here. I believe you were going to uh, take a look at it and see if there's yeah, anything that needs to be improved. Okay. Uh, I, I don't think okay. there's going to be any changes. Okay, but just take a look at it again, please, so I can let Dover yep. know. We can let Dover know that we're good with what we have on there. We'll get that settled for the year. Um, now, but, is there any other streets? Uh, yeah. Um, Dover also does... Uh, There's Hall Street in uh, Hall. Pinecrest. Pine, uh, I don't know, Dover or Summers. Probably Dover does Pinecrest, right? And, and we drive to Summers. Yeah, and, and we do Gulf there. Road. Um, do we do Gulf for Dover? No, we don't. We only do Bear Road. So the very end of Bear Road. We do. We go to... So that's... Okay. Yeah. 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 That's what I meant. The, they're a little portion yeah. of Bear down to Gulf. Okay. We do that for them. That's right. a trade-off. Okay. And then Summers Road, we do the end of the roads off of Clement to Summers Road. For Summers Road, but just thinking Dover. Dover. Are, there any, are there any other Dover roads you should think of? No, that's really it. That neighborhood, I mean, I don't know that you named all the streets, but it's that neighborhood behind Hannaford. Yeah, Hall Street and whatever. Uh, there was another street, I can't think of. There, there are a couple of. Yeah. Uh, for the life of me. Anyway, but yeah, that would be it. Um, Take a look and make sure they're they're listed in there. Uh, Oak Street's really the big one. That's where the most traffic and it's where the, the if there's a pothole on one end, who gets called? And no, no one goes out. But no, I mean, I didn't state know law the says they have closed until I come in on Monday morning. Right, right, right. When they had that issue, that's one. Someone right. pops a tire, and the state law says we had to have it fixed within like 24, 48 hours of notice. Well, we didn't get notice. One of the towns are going to be on the hook paying for the 
paying for the puddle for, for the repairs of the car because we didn't uh, respond. So I'm not sure we get that all. And this, it includes police too, right? Like details and doesn't that care on? We the, the MOU should yes, and it did in a temporary way, but yeah. it should be addressed. Take a look again. at it again. Okay, so then uh, transfer station attendant position, we have uh, Mr. Martels uh, been down there. He's doing a very good job. Welcome him and thank him for his work. We have one vacancy still that we were we'll advertising for. We'll okay. look at it. Okay, but how are things? We might uh, have, uh, there's someone that's at spoke with Saturday, uh, Gary Karen, he's been on the fire department here in town. Okay. So he may be interested in doing it Saturdays. Okay. So we'll be taking that on. Good to have another yes. person. Uh, During the week right now, with we're, you? we're doing it with, you know, Ed, Caught him occasionally, but the two days during the week are pretty easy. We can probably handle it right now for two, but the Saturday as we start day. getting into the recycling more and stuff, it's going to have to be paid okay. more attention to it. Okay. Um, all right. So I think we have two other things on here. Um, there's the Department of Transportation Student Project. Um, I'm going to table that then, unless you want to talk about it. Have you had a chance? Did you see the email? I can't remember who it was. Was George CC on that? I'm on? not sure. Okay, so you know, I'm going to send that to you. There was um, um, the Department of Transportation was here last year, the year before last, we talked about Portland Avenue and um, what can be done with the intersection of the crossing of Bear Road, Roberts Road, and Portland. I was here. Yeah, yeah. there was a proposal um, by engineering students uh, to, to do a study and. I'll forward it so you can see what they're they're proposing or something we think. Did you? You may have not have been. I, I saw the email. Didn't, but then you were already here. Then okay. I didn't understand the concept. Okay. okay. So why don't we? Um, I, I would. I want to table it, but I want to. I want to look at it again. And um, strike original planning. I went to their meeting. I don't know when it was. I have another one on Thursday, but during the day. Um, met with Kyle, who is their, their transportation planner. He um, I reminded him that he was supposed to be working on an application for us um, to do an audit of that road, um, a federal audit, a uh, safety audit. Uh, there's no charge to us, but um, he needs to get the application in for us. And it ties in with this, so I want to wait to hear what he has to say about that before we talk about it, if that's okay. Um, the only other thing we have on here is a request of the Water and Sewer District to plow. You had mentioned, George, you didn't think it would be an issue right. a couple weeks ago, right? And, and I still don't think it will be an issue. Okay. He said, I, I told him, we, we can open, as long as he keeps it open, we will push everything back for him after. You know, okay. And we, that should not be an issue. Okay. We can do it when we come in between, you know, wait for the sewer to go again. Right. We okay. Keep an eye so on what we way. need to figure out then, um, as a board, um, is what makes sense to charge uh, the the water and sewer district for whoever's time it is doing it. And, you know, we're in terms of vehicles, whatever. We may find that it's a, you know, it's, it's not a, it's not even worth billing. I don't know. I don't, probably not. I'm not sure if it will be worth it, but it may not be. So we'll work on that. But um, we should let the, then we should probably let the water and sewer folks know that we're, um, we're in agreement that we will have uh, George and crew help them out down there, um, and that we need to work out the details as to how they would be paying us for that service. So. Have they been charge in the past? They did it themselves. Oh, they, they had, um, this is a they had one vehicle. of the, their superintendent, I think the superintendent had a plow on his personal vehicle. Okay. I was doing it with that, which I, I, I don't see that. Maybe down at the, the actual yard down there is probably not a problem doing it with that. Uh, as no, snow builds up, it probably is. Some of these probably are pretty steep. It's getting into the wells. And now with the repeater on top of the tower, that's going to have to be maintained too. Yeah, so we're, we're going to. So. Yeah. yeah. So we have to make sure we keep that on the list too. Yeah, one of your crew is out there doing yeah, that. Yeah, and just uh, so. so you know, Miles, uh, he used it. When we were down to one truck, the last little John, he came up and plowed for us right. with his own personal truck to help us out. Yeah. Right. So that's why I said we need to figure out does it make sense to actually charge them, or is there a trade off that they could be yeah. doing something else for us and that would, you know, to offset that time? I mean, there may be something, that opportunity too. I don't why, know. why can't we, why can't they offer the, the water bill versus the plowing? 
I mean, we pay water so. bills. I think that would be wonderful. I don't know if the amount of plowing would cover the water bill, though. But Our water bill is not. What is it? It's the same. It's, a, it's not very big, right? Eighty-three dollars a quarter, and two fifteen a quarter for sewer. But so, this is the only building with sewer. True. Um, so we we'll something, something we got to figure out. Maybe it's just yeah. a, yeah. an exchange, yeah. and then it doesn't. Yeah. Nobody has but, to kind of pay it up. But in the meantime, we're going to let the water and sewer district know that. Um, I'll send them an email saying that yes, in fact, we we want to be able to help them and work with them, and we'll figure something out about how we're going to offset costs for the town. But just you know, do you have anything else for us, George, or anything else that we have for George? All right. Thank you. Thank you again for bringing the trucks down you and Ed. No, and, uh, and, uh, you know, like I said, I, I want to be part of, you know, I want us to be part of what's going on. So and it's like the Christmas story. I was out sitting in the parade. Oh, nice. And, okay. And, uh, Over in the suburb of Bronx. Yeah. Right. Oh, nice. So we want to be out there. That means great. we work for the town. We want to be part of it. So that's great. What did you and Ed, as uh, folks that don't live in town, and were your wives there too? Did I see? Mm -hmm. What did you think of the, uh, the Actually, firework display of our little town? I'll be, I'll be honest with you, this is one of the best fireworks displays I've seen. <laughs> and and amazing job. Same thing, and Sue and Ed's wife said the same thing. You know, they, it was great. I mean, oh, good. You know, I was a little surprised. I thought there'd be more people there where most activities are, you know, donation or free. Or, yeah. You know, that surprised me a little bit. And, but... You know, it grows people, every year. People yeah. are busy. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, we had more there than we've ever had yeah, it's in the last there. two or three years that we did it. So, I mean, uh, it went from less than 100 to 250 plus people. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, and I would love to see more. You're absolutely you know, right. Yeah. But a lot of kids and stuff. A lot of adults yeah. got to see the equipment. Yeah. They got in the equipment. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it was, I think it's good. I think to see, you know, see what you have. Yeah. But it really, it did grow immensely this year, which I was really happy to see. So, well, like I said, if anything you can help with, that's what we're here for. So. Great. We appreciate that. Thank you. I, I, George, sure. of course. <laughs> Head on the brain now. And I know you were talking about budgets. Budget. We have yes. it. Yes. And we'll be sure able Caroline to. has it. And yes, and we'll be working with her on that yep. this week. And so uh, we'll, we'll um, I want to do all three next uh, Monday night. So we'll have the police fire and and you come in and yeah, it'll be here. Explain it. Okay, perfect. Alrighty. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Ah, <laughs> now I remember why you've been sitting here this whole time. Right here on. <laughs> Town administration. Could not New possibly item. have forgotten. I've been trying to forget about this, but I have can't. Um, MS4 stormwater permit. Notice of intent. I wish all those people that came for the year, for the. Uh, their last little presentation could listen to this. This is a fun time. It's really fun. Um, thank you for um, reading and trying to get through the materials that I sent you. I've tried to give you a heads up as much as I can about what this is about and the content. Um, this is, I, I printed for you the notice of intent followed by. Um, a spreadsheet of our waterways and how they are impaired, followed by the guidelines for how we need to fill out the NOI. Um, and I took the trouble to print the many pages because um, this is not going away. So we might as well um, get more familiar with it. Thank you. Um, that's the supplemental ah, material. Thank you. Okay. So, um, this has a lot of implications, mostly for the select board. There are some implications for the planning board. It also has significant implications for the highway department. Um, it means that we have to make efforts and we have to quantify our actions. And what that means, um, for example, is um, for catch basin chaining, we're going to have to approximate the number of tons that we're picking up out of the catch basin. They get dumped in the transfer station. We're going to have to report on how many tons we're cleaning out of the catch basins. Um, we're going to have to, you know, this happens over a little bit of time, but not a lot of time to adjust. We're going to have to um, require our plow drivers to be Green Snow Pro um, certified. Mm -hmm keep track and log their, their salt. And George is ahead of the game because he already logged his salt usage last year, which is really great. 
Um, we may have to modify equipment because you're only supposed to use sand under 20 degrees. Um, so you're going to have to know that. You have to also, um, in theory, have the ability to modify your equipment so that it can um, change how much salt it's dispersing according to temperature, which can fluctuate even within a storm. So I, I don't, you know, that's not necessarily the first year. Right. Um, but the implications are, are grave. So we have right. four different areas. All right, so, so what, we have the ground speed controls on what? Is it one or two trucks right now? I think there's I think it's all, two. Uh, okay, I think it's two. two. I, I think but that doesn't, that isn't. Um, that just makes it a regular right. steady thing that goes right. along with the speed that right. doesn't necessarily um, play with the temperature, temperature factor. Like, right. right. So. Um, Can I ask a quick question. Mm -hmm. How do you judge or include all of the state roads in this town that affect us? We don't. Us we don't. We don't. And we don't have to. We don't. But how does that? Their actions could affect our our actions, yes. and yes. they don't care about that. No, they do. Oh. Um, the state department of transportation, as well as hospitals and universities yeah. and airports, other kinds of facilities have to fill out their own MS4 NOIs. Oh, okay. So, um, in my office, I have a beautiful color map of Rollinsford with our waterways, color coded by how impaired they are. The spreadsheet that you have indicates in what manner that they're impaired. We have E. coli and nitrogen and phosphorus and all kinds of things. And those impairments are dictating the actions that we have to take and the way in which we filled out this form. So Paul Casals, a resident in town you may know, um, attended the Seacoast Stormwater Coalition's meetings with me. Suzanne had started this, and she, by point of information, just sort of happened to find out um, the hard way that we were um, an MS4 community, um, quite by accident, actually, and got hooked into the Stormwater Coalition, um, which was very fortuitous because they have um, state DES people there, as well as um, state representation from EPA there, and somebody from UNH whose job it is to inform these communities about our obligation with the MS4, and also how to fill it out. And they created the template um, and the supporting material that you have there, and, and vast quantities of other supporting material that I sent you links to. Um, all because it's an enormous amount of material to, to try to digest and get into one document. The point of that coalition, which I think is really important, is, is unity in, um, in reporting. Because we are accountable to the government for, for what we are claiming to do. There's kind of some grayness about what do you mean by this? You know, an outfall. How many outfalls do you have? And, and what exactly is an outfall? Um, they've defined that, but there are still questions about what those things could mean because there are just so many variations of structures and, and distances from waterways in various communities. It's important to have unity so that we are all doing um, the same reporting in the same manner and, and unified um, comprehension and understanding of how we're doing this. So um, I can't say enough about the necessity of attendance to the Stormwater Coalition. Um, so that being said, this NOI due October 1st is just the first step. As you can see from reading it, it's really outlining how we are going to maintain our permit, which means how we are going to do all of these things that make us worthy of discharging our stormwater into um, the river systems. The, so Denise had noticed some spelling errors, and I, I want you to point them out in, in just a minute. I also want to um, point your attention to the bottom right-hand side of the first page. There are three empty squares on the bottom right-hand corner there for dates. And the, the, the second two dates I, I found, um, which are that the planning board adopted those regulations on June 2nd, 2018. So that's the third one? 
I'm sorry, never mind, sorry. Um, I, I inverted that. Um, February 6th, I, I inverted my numbers there, sorry. Oh, which one is? Um, so the second two numbers, the construction and erosion and sediment control authority, yep. as well as post-construction stormwater management. What are those dates again, I'm sorry? Um, February 6th, they are both February 6th of this year. Of this year? Of this year, they, that the planning board adopted those regulations. Um, one of the things that I really don't know is, and I need the board to help decide this, which is rather arbitrary. Um, we need to adopt illicit discharge detection and elimination regulations. We need, we need to report on the date by which we will do that. Okay. So, um, and who's, um, who's, um, that will be the planning board. Uh, it's going to be in our, are we taking? Well, so we can find language about right. it. That's not really the point. The okay. point is um, we need to swear that the planning board's going to do it, and it's going to be in the subdivision and site plan regulations. Okay. Well, that's for England's uh, bugaboo at the moment, but it's going so, to be easy enough because the The other thing to know about this is that it's really um, extremely important that we file it on time. Yeah. It can be revised if we find that there's an okay. error. So um, it's about intent as much as as much as anything. Right. Um, so it, it clearly won't happen at the next meeting. I'm assuming this needs a public hearing. It probably needs a public hearing, and I would say give yourself the time to do it and do it right. I think the point is that you have things in motion and that you're reporting about your intention to do something. I don't think it has to happen in the next month or two. Okay, but like two months, six months. I wouldn't even say by the end of the year we would be good. Okay. So they will give us comment. It, for sure, if, if they don't like what we are reporting, they will let us know. Okay. And where are we going? Where are we getting the uh, language from? Um, all of the all of the um, advising authorities, state EPA and um, DES, have language. That we can adopt and plug into the. Like we can get language the, uh, without a problem. Yes. Site review and uh, submit Yes. Okay. Okay. So it looks like, uh, have I already jumped ahead? Sorry, you're on the first page. So we have those Well, dates. so I just wanted to identify something that we need to figure out before right. before we go. And then my goal is to um, get you all to agree to a date to fill in that blank, address typos, and then I'm going to reprint this for your signature tonight. So... Effective date or estimated effective date, I would say January, can we say January 31st? You can say whatever you want. 19? Uh, I was going to the plan where we got done by then? Yes. Okay. What, are, are what date was that? 13119. Okay. It was okay. That's okay with the. Uh, they will let us know if okay. it's not for sure. Don't so, let the, uh, this language like uh, no, the yeah, last set of it. You, you were the one who made it happen, so I'm not mm -hmm. saying it was your fault when you were chair. I'm saying we don't want that language. Yeah, it's a language for certain. What, once they receive all these permits, they will review them, and we may be interacting with them about our response. And then they will um, send us uh, um, approval of our application um, pretty immediately. So. We'll, they'll, they'll reach out if they need to. The second page is um, that beautiful map in, in yep. um, the office mm -hmm. points to where our outflows are. Yep. We, this page is about reporting on our four outflows which are in the MS4 district. Not all of Rollinsford is in an MS4 district. We had the misfortune of receiving a map with a very small area reported to us that got corrected to be um, much larger. Um, so our obligation is going to grow over time. Um, but it doesn't change what this page is to look like, which is for all of these out, for all of our infected waterways that mm -hmm. are impaired waterways that are in the MS4 district, how many outflows, the second column, how many outflows are on that waterway? And then you can see the columns for the different ways in which they may be impaired. And the last column, other impairments if they are not otherwise um, checked off to the left. Mercury, huh? Yes. It's coming down from the mills? Yes. So, over, so we are going to end up having to test 
our outflows, test the water, um, report on the test findings. Um, eventually, there's a lot of, um, as you turn the page. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's coming from the mills, because it is, there's storm the drains up here that drain down to that up. Well, you know, who's to say? I'm sure the goal is to ultimately find out exactly how contaminants are getting into the water, which may or may not be storm water, as you say. Right. Um, the river is already coated yellow from as it come, um, as the Salmon Falls comes in from Summersworth. It turns red just after the upper dam by the mills, um, and it stays red all the way through the river. So, if you turn to page four, mm -hmm. um, public education and outreach. We have to have a certain number of messages per year about a variety of problems, you could say, which impact or potentially impact stormwater. Um, they've given these categories of messages to us based on the kinds of impairments that exist. So we need to um, send people messages on fertilizer use, pet waste, leaf and yard waste, um, and septic systems. What, what does a message mean? That's a really great okay. question. There's a lot of supplemental no. material on that, and I can send it to you, which the, um, these, these sheets were filled out um, by materials prepared for the coalition by um, the people at the state and UNH working for the coalition. Um, so it can mean a lot of things. One of the things it can mean is um, a sign at the transfer station telling people not to dispose of yard waste, but instead to mulch their leaves for a slow release of fertilizer in their lawn rather than keeping piles of mm -hmm. yard waste. Um, it can mean brochures. And in the case of brochures and email messages, um, some of those things will be provided to us, and we will have to pay for printing and postage costs, but we don't have to create the message in all cases. Okay. Um, so, so that's one of the lighter lifting categories. It seems like for, so for businesses, developers, and industrial facilities, it says that's being developed by, with the uh, Seacoast Coalition, Stormwater Coalition, which is very helpful. So. Yes, yes. It is. Can't say enough for that organization because they. One less thing we have to do. So. Well, yes, but um, don't mistake one less thing to do for any less. I just mean work develop, <laughs> developing the material. Right? Yes, because this. I understand this, we still have to distribute. Our, our obligation that. with regard to this is, is quite that. significant. And, 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 and I'll people get to need that to start paying minute. attention too to the uh, beginning year of implementation. Right. So. This is next year. So, so that's, um, it's rather timely because we're planning for the budget, right. and this is of course going to have budgetary implications. Yeah. Um, one of the things we're required to do, as you can see from page six, um, is for the select board to hold a public hearing about stormwater and its implications to invite the public. We're going to have to report on how many people come. There's going to be like epic levels on reporting about everything you do. And for example, one of the messages can be via email and pointing people toward this, um, the coalition blog. Um, but then you report on blog hits so that you can try to measure an impact of your reach. Right. That is the goal with everything is measuring impact. Um, so I just want to you know, I, I don't want to go line by line because I think you've all reviewed this. I'm mm -hmm. just looking for um, to get awareness with the board with, in terms of what we're signing up for and also to be sure that you agree with the responsible parties because ultimately everything lies with the select board, but some things will clearly be implemented by um, the highway department or in, in most cases the select board, in some cases the highway department. Um, in one case, the, the water district, um, and, the board, yeah. and the planning board, the regulations will be the planning board. And actually, the planning board, I, I'm not sure if you agree, but at, at some point, they have to um, make sure that people are being, comp 
compliant with their post-construction stormwater plans, which is going to have building inspector code enforcement implications. Okay. We have to check up on people and make sure that they are. Well, so this is where. Um, and we have to give them materials this actually is, too. Well, uh, this is where um, the, the the administrator position actually comes in handy because there are within the. Um, the planning process within the site review process for a number of developments in this town. There's one on Settlement Circle. Um, they are actually responsible for cleaning out their own wastewater mitigation um, program or whatever, um, service, whatever it is, whatever I call it. Um, I don't know if that's ever been done. I'm sure it, and, I, I can't say 100%, but likely not. The problem with that is you can require that in the planning process, mm -hmm. but it's very difficult follow up with what I'm talking about. So. Well, you can follow up and check in on them, but even if you know they blatantly, absolutely haven't cleaned it out, there's mm -hmm. no way, there's no recourse. Well, to we, we, we need to figure out what that, how we gain that recourse. That's what well, that, so that, that's also something that the... Why would one development have to do it and other developments don't? Because each is an individual case within, in front of the planning right. board. And so as the, the planning departments board change. Individually. And, and as the planning department changes, as regulations change and, and membership changes, every case is different. Are they a, a, I don't know what the word is, are they a, an association or something? I mean, they have well, five so separate right. houses owned by five separate people. Yep. And the developer has no ownership. And that's why there's no recourse, really, is because there's no ownership for the developer. You know, in a condo association, you can, you can lean associate, the association. Yeah. 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 So you can't just do just that with... Yeah. Yeah. Th th there are a lot of implications with that and... and but the, that but it, to, but so just be, the developer entered into this agreement with the town, mm -hmm. but when they buy their homes, this is part of their, um, part of their due diligence to check what, what, what covenant or, or any of that that's on the deed that goes along with it because it's not just owned by the developers, it's owned by whoever owns that property. So they're so, responsible. So even if it's in the deed, it's, it's one of those cases where we don't have policies. Right. To, like, how do you enforce that? Right. If, that if that's even enforceable, right. you know, um, whose job is it to do what? And can you lean? Is it legal to lean a house because they're not cleaning out their touch base? And there may be other, I only know this because we were working on these regulations and I remember it was, I remember Pat, my other Pat or John, said, oh, well, you already have an example of this in town over on Development Circle that they're, they're responsible for cleaning out these mitigation uh, systems. And we all around the table went there because we're all new. And we're all, oh, really? But that is why it would be prudent to review the planning documents to make sure that what you have makes sense right. and it's mm -hmm. enforceable and that you have what you need to enforce it. If we're going to require something mm -hmm. like that. So, um, to be clear, there's a lot about this that Paul and I, you know, are not fully understanding yet because um, you, you have to be an engineer to really understand some of what the implications are. And mm -hmm. some of it is not really even, um, it's, it's a little bit of a, I, I'll say it out loud, a farce to think that a, a small town can do some of a what it's yeah. mm -hmm. expecting. Yeah, it's certainly an unfunded mandate. And it is exactly an unfunded mandate, yes. All right, so everyone should be paying particular attention to uh, who's responsible for what. And I think, as Caroline already said, nine-tenths of uh, the responsibility falls upon the selector to make sure that these things are being implemented. And I looked at it earlier today. I mean, I don't know how we don't. There is no one else to 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 do it. So I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. You can't pass the buck to anybody. I don't know. And the water department is doing what the water department is. We're asking the water department in a couple of cases to do things. I don't know. We can't compel them because they're a separate um, government organization. I mean, there's the highway department, which we obviously have oversight, and the planning board, but the rest are all us. So, um, us, I mean, whoever comes after us, because this, hap this is not going to be, this is a long term, this is not, we're down in a year. This is 
So, so I do notice that many of the items are 2019 through 2020, or within two years. I do see some more than four years. years. Were these number of years um, given to me to... So, so, so that's a really interesting point. Um, thank you for bringing that up. Um, I don't... Um, if you look on page 14, mm -hmm. um, we're actually missing years there, and we're going to have to fill them in. But, but I want to bring your attention to, to that column. It says, beginning year of implementation. Oh, I see. Okay. So there's sort of this implication that you're going to start you know, this right. certain level of stuff on year one, and then in year two, you're going to do year one stuff plus year two stuff. And that it's not that you do one thing and then another thing, but that you do cumulatively more every year. Right. And some of these are annual. Right. Ongoing. It's not just, uh, yeah. Some right. of it's annual. Some of it's, you know, four messages a year. So right. we can pick what the messages are and how they're going out and when in the year. There is some flexibility that way. Um, there's also, um, so there's a, so, I, I jumped ahead. Page 14 is Municipal Good Housekeeping and Pollution Prevention. So um, we need to, Paul had um, filled in dates for that, so we need to do that. But there's also, um, there are categories to this. So um, at the top of the page, um, on the left-hand side, Public involvement and participation is page six. So those are things that you're doing that are specifically not just outreach, because messages is the first thing, putting messages out. This MCM2 is you, you have to involve the public and you have to measure how many people come and you have to show that you are enticing people to attend meetings and not just reaching out to them. Um, the third part on page eight, illicit, um, illicit discharge detection and elimination. This is more in-house with the select board working with the highway department about, um, we're going to need some policies about how we train people and how we do what we do to ensure that we are not discharging um, more than we need to, for example, salt. So you can see that DPW is listed a couple of times. I'm not sure whether that's really the best answer, given that, you know, again, the select board. What is SSO? Um, sure, so um, Stormwater. Um, it's your um, oh, it's your infrastructure. Out yes, it's your outflows. Oh, oh, okay. So you have to really be sure that you have all your outflows. Um, were well, they were mapped by? Um, yes, they they were, and we missed one at right. least. So we found another one, and we're not really sure how it connects to the infrastructure under the street. So um, we will likely be paying for cameraing at some point yeah. to determine how it connects in. So and by the way, negligently uh, dispose of their pet waste, but not. It, it is measurable to count pet waste in a park and then put up a sign and then measure pet waste again. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that facetiously. Like that may be something that we are signing up. To well, do. It's, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, not surprised. Between. Uh, Bicentennial Park, Scotland Road, and um, the other one down yes. by Bacaris, where people just toss their little poop bags into the ravine down there. Or so, they don't bother to, to pick it up on 
I'm Scotland. I believe it. Oh, no. So hopefully education will help with that. Well, banning dogs too down there might help too. Take the people from Maine to walk their dogs somewhere else. So as as you are evaluating or or reviewing this, um, Suzanne has served on the stormwater committee. Mm -hmm. She was part going to the coalition meetings and she started filling out this NLI. Mm -hmm. um, she's gone away on vacation and her commitment was in seeing this NLI filed. Mm -hmm. I don't anticipate that she's going to want to stay on the stormwater committee. Okay. Because of the gravity of the responsibility with this, mm -hmm. I am suggesting that a select board member be a part of the stormwater committee mm -hmm. and that the select board delegate the timetable of the obligations and sort of um, do some of the grunt work to make sure that, you know, this is the pamphlet we're going to send out April 1st and this is the workshop you're going to have on, you know, May 15th and, and so forth so that the, the select board can implement rather than um, completely managed. You, you have a good stormwater group, mm -hmm. um, and I think they'd be willing to take this on, but I, I think you're going to need help in mm -hmm. making sure that you don't miss something. Yeah. Because we have a lot of reporting. It's not just the sending out the messages and the doing the stuff, but it's also in the reporting to prove that we've done what we've said we were going to do. So we're going to need help with that. And so that's why um, I had sent that email about getting a board member on. Um, and that doesn't necessarily have to mean, mean in the coalition meetings, though I think that would be valuable as well, because they inform the materials that you can be using to carry this out. I would also suggest that you have the road agent participate in the stormwater meetings since he's got a considerable amount of responsibility in carrying this out as well. Mm -hmm. But the first step is the following. Okay. So, Denise, did you want to... Um, I, I hate to put you on the spot. Them that I found. You can take this with you. Most of them, it's either Rollins or the select board. It's are misspelled. Are misspelled. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's R O L L R O L L I I N S. Okay. It's and then select nice. words are destroyed throughout. So I just circled what I what I recently found. All right. Okay. Very good. So throughout that, you can give me another copy after the fact. Yes, I will. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are a number of things. Really, everything we have to report on where it's being kept. Um, the easiest answer to that, to my mind, is on the website. We have to say that things are publicly viewable. Mm -hmm. It also helps us know where things are and keep track of them if we put them on the website. So um, we have the stormwater system infrastructure maps. It's two pages. Um, we have the MS4 district map, which yeah. I've had scanned. Yeah. It's one large page. Um, it's the NOI, um, the original MS4 General New Hampshire permit, um, the spreadsheet of impaired waters, and I think there's one more um, appendix. But I'm suggesting that we have a specific page. I'm going to be meeting with Tia in the next couple of weeks to talk about um, some changes to the website, and that's one of the things that I'm going to ask of her is to um, create a dedicated, there is a section to stormwater, but I, um, I I think it might be, I'm going to be looking for some changes um, if it's all right with you to make, the, to make this easier to find and all in one place. Okay. So on page 14, you needed three dates. We need to come to a consensus on uh, yes, years. catch basin cleaning, street sweep program, and road soil use optimization program. Okay. 
All right, so complete and implement two years after effective date of permit. Effective date of permit should be very shortly. It, you know, once they receive this, they'll review it and they will notify us that they have mm -hmm. approved our permit. So, um, beginning of your implementation, to my mind, is uh, you know between now and 2020. If it's something that we're already doing, um, it's you know catch basin cleaning. We right. might as well put 2019 since we do it anyway. So we're beginning your implementation 2019. And we're already, yeah we're doing street sweeping and catch basin anyways, right? So right. 2019. Is Then uh, road cell use optimization. So they're already, um, Ed and George are already Green Step Pro certified. Right. They've made changes. Um, you can put 2019. Um, it doesn't mean necessarily that they've reached the highest level of what yeah, but can we're be beginning done. to implement it. So. Yes, that's, that's um, the point, right? Beginning year, right. So 2019 then, because we're already doing some of it. I would think so. So, the folks are okay with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are the three things you needed? Um, I actually need the four above it as well because they are blank as well. Well, it says complete two years after effective data permit. So. All right, so we're going to do 2020 on all those. I just, wanted, I just want to say it out loud so that yep. you're agreeing. Right, I've been there for yes. 2020. And then there's, um, one, there's one on the next page. page Inspections and maintenance of stormwater treatment structures. Um, inspect and maintain treatment structures at least annually. So um, this says DPW, but really. Um, you don't have page 15? Oh, this is hidden under, hidden under my uh, paperwork. Pardon me. So is this something we're already doing? Um, yes and no. When you, when you clean out a storm, when you clean out a catch basin, um, you can see, and sometimes even when they're out doing road work, you can see when, when um, I would say yes, we're already doing this. I, I would say we're already doing it. We're not necessarily doing it to the level that they want us to, because really they should be lined, and they're not lined. They're not lined. No. And, and that's going to be... You mean the catch, the catch basin? Catch basin, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yes. It should be 2019 that we're doing it now. I mean, Ed and yeah, I mean, out, I, I think replacing could, structures all out of this You can see here. there's a lot of discretion coming out of this report. So you know, we're beginning to implement, though. Well, yeah. yes, we are. Um, we got a long road ahead of us. All right, not arguing that. So are there other things in here that we need to? Um, if you would have a quick look, I think. I thought that was it. But. I did finally get to view this. Took some and then you wish you hadn't. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Okay. We're good, but I did notice that oh, there's only one signature yes, on it's this. All the penalty of uh, ominous uh, mm -hmm. paragraph above it for those that are signing it. Oh, never mind that there's prison time associated with falsifying this, this form, so we make sure we get it right. I prefer not to go to prison over the MS for one. Bless you. Thank you. As you can imagine.
Um, Caroline told me that um, you have a green, I should say. All right. Well, one will not be heard from. Two out of three ain't bad. Uh, so 904, we're going to adjourn. Like consensus. All right. Thank you all. Back to